Hello and welcome to the fourth part of our tutorial series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and in this video we're going to be looking at some of the materials and textures. So to get started I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Cycles render engine. And I'll bring that menu out a bit so we can start seeing a few more of the tabs here. Go over to the Material tab and we're just going to take a look at what the texture looks like over here. So I'll drag in a new window, go to the UV image editor. And we do not see an image texture at all. And that's because, well, on default it's set to fit for the Blender render engine and not Cycles. So we'll just go ahead and open up our picture. And there we have it. Not very good naming conventions, but we'll live with that for now. You can go ahead and change the names if you want to. We'll just click use nodes here and we'll bring open a new window and go to the node editor. So that's right here, shortcut N on this menu. Sorry if I'm going a little too quick here, but that's where it is. And we're just gonna go ahead and open up an image texture. And we'll just click the menu here because it's already all loaded. And it's 973ac.png. And we'll just stick it in this color input slot right here. So if we hit Shift Z, preview that for a bit. So we just know that it's, it's actually mapped on there. And if we hit Alt Z, we can go into the material viewing. And we can start to see some of the textures on there. So... We'll just go ahead and check the rest of our objects here. Make sure that, well, they actually do have the same material set to them. So for some of the objects, we won't need to mess around and do them all individually since some of them are the same. So I'll just go ahead and name some of these materials. And for the head here, that is the texture we're going to use for it. And it's all mapped on correctly already. So I'll go ahead and add in an image texture node, open it up right here, and connect it to the input of the diffuse shader. So everything looks nice. And we'll just do some of the legs here. Not exactly sure which one it is. Might be this one. Probably not this one. So we'll go back to this one. Definitely not that one. That's probably for the waist, I imagine. So we're going to be using this one. This one's the one that fits. Those are just UVs sitting out in the corner there, doing nothing much. So I'll name this leg.r correspondingly. And I'll just go ahead and... Well, I'll just... Not showing up, so use nodes. There we go. And image texture. And we'll just put that in the right slot here. And select the correct texture and now that we've done all that everything looks quite nice alt z to view the materials and we'll just go ahead and do the same thing with the other leg so it isn't mapped to the same thing so we'll need to switch over to the next texture and use nodes we'll rename our material here and we can go ahead and add in our image texture and we'll just and you can also select both of them and hit F on the keyboard to automatically well set the input there and now for the waist we'll just select this interesting teal looking I guess it's some sort of belt and we'll just do the same exact thing that we did for the other ones and so on so there we have it all the textures are on quite nicely and that is a really nice torso texture, I like that. Pretty classy looking. So, we'll just select our head here. And I guess we're going to, well, say we wanted to, we had some sort of custom texture that we wanted to put in there in, in place of his face. So, I'll just go ahead and open that right up. And I have a happyface.png here that I quickly drew up for this very purpose. And it looks... 
really interesting, I suppose. So we're just going to select everything, move it over, and we're just going to map this part on correctly. So about how it was on the other texture. Somewhere in the somewhere in that area. We can move it a bit later when we see where it's going to be. And things are looking pretty funny. And that's because we didn't check the right texture in the actual material. Which is what we'll do right now. And set that to happyface.png. Looks really interesting. Low resolution. It's got squares for eyes that are on the sides of his face. So I'll go ahead and SX scale that out a bit. And give it something decent. At least his face is slapped on right. And we will notice that it is repeating, which is not what we want. So I'll put in an input texture coordinate and vector mapping nodes. And this is just for making sure that we know that the input is UVs. And the mapping will be used to not make it tile over and over. So to do that, we just need to select min, maybe max, play around with these values, see what looks good. And of course you can see that it is not changing in the material viewport. So, there really isn't any way to, at least that I know of, of fixing that. It's just one of those things. It will show up correctly if you do the render preview. So all of that is set and quite nice. Yeah, you can see really low resolution. That can be changed in the preferences, but it's all right for now. We'll leave it as is. And we'll just keep on going with the tutorial. So I'll add in a mix shader. You can see that it doesn't look too good with just a simple diffuse shader. So actually, what am I doing there? with another diffuse shader. So we'll check the put the alpha into the fac value of the mix shader and we'll set this to about that sort of color. Well, we'll get the exact color from here. There we go. Use a little dropper tool. So, there we have it and now we have overlaid the texture over a simple diffuse shader material. And it's a whole lot easier doing this with a transparent texture. In case you ever wanted to change the material to a different color, you wouldn't have to go and mess around with the texture every time. And I'll just set up the lighting real quick here. Maybe a 0 0.03, get some sharp shadows there. Bounce. That's a new feature. I actually haven't seen that since I upgraded to the next Blender version. So that's another thing I'll have to look at sometime. But for now, I guess we'll just leave it at the default value and keep going on with the tutorial. So things are looking pretty decent. And we're just going to go ahead and select all of the our objects here. I'm not sure if you have to deselect these, but I think I will just in case. You can try it without it, but I'm going to try to deselect all of these things that are not objects. I want to just select my my material here, my objects, and I'll just go through one by one. Not sure if there's a way to select all of these without dragging a box, so I'm just selecting all our parts. And finally after that, we'll just go ahead and shade smooth. So it is looking better, nice and smooth, not all blocky and polygonally, that's a word, not all polygonal, just smooth for the most part at least. So after that, you can see that just more diffuse shaders does not look too good. So we're just going to keep on adding to our material here. Throw in a mix shader and a glossy BSDF and I actually prefer Beckman. Now it's defaulted to GGX, but I just like Beckman. Especially since it's how what I've been using for a while now. So, maybe 0.1. And this fact value here, 
0 corresponds with this shader, and 1 corresponds with this input. So, I want a little bit of glossy, but mostly diffuse. So you get something like that. And I really don't like previewing things very early on. It just looks, <laughs> it just looks ugly to me. When it's not finished. So I'll use nodes. I'll start on the hair shader. We're probably going to go and change these fac and glossy values later. But I'll keep on going like this until I get enough so I can actually see what it looks like. I'll set this to an actual decent value that I can remember. And no, just to use real quick. Of course, you can also copy and paste these values with well ease. And we're just going to go ahead and add in a ground plane. And I'll give this a quick material. Just name it plane. And for now, that should be decent enough. Add in a bit of strength on the light, way too much. A little bit less. Something around there. And we'll just zoom in on our materials here. Mm, not too good, quite honestly. There's a whole lot of fireflies coming in and noise from all this glossiness. Done the reason why I don't like glossy shaders too much, or things like that. So I'll just go ahead and use nodes, and we're just going to do something interesting here. We'll add in an environment texture by clicking that little circle to the right, and we'll open up our HDRI map, wherever that may be. Actually, I think I'm uploading it to the cloud right now. I really needed an actual folder, so... You'll have to pardon me as I go ahead and just move it over. So I do have a few HDRI maps that I got for free off the internet. There are a few places, but yeah, just search for HDRI maps and you'll find a whole ton of good resources for them. So I'll pick one that looks nice, something clean and black and white as much as possible, but a little bit of color never hurt, and it's always add some interesting things to the scene, so we'll see how that looks right now, and that is looking better, get some nice reflections in there from the glossy, bump down the strength a bit because the environment, environment map is now adding in a good deal of light, so it is looking better now. And we can go ahead, well I guess I'll just see what GGX looks like on this. I've looked at it in other series and other models, but it doesn't look as good as Beckman. Well, it depends on the situation, of course. GGX seems to be a bit sharper, I believe. At least in the looks. I don't know the math that goes behind it, but it does look sharper to me. So if that's the look that you're going for, I'd say just go for it. And that concludes our tutorial. Please like, subscribe, comment, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next part of the tutorial series, and thank you again.